Well, hello everyone. Today we're going to take a quick look at Artemis Fowl, based on the book of the same name. This was directed by Kenneth Branagh and stars Ferdia Shaw, Laura McDonnell, and Josh Gad. Shaw plays a young man named Artemis Fowl, or I guess technically it's Artemis Fowl Jr., as his father, Artemis Sr., has suddenly been kidnapped and accused of stealing several priceless artifacts. And to save his father from this mysterious shadowy being who we never actually see, he must get something called the Aculos. So he kidnaps a fairy cop, which then brings the entire fairy police force down upon him, and Artemis and his bodyguard Dom are somehow able to fight off all of them on their own. This leads to the fairies sending in an oversized dwarf who finds the Aculos hidden within Artemis' home, Foul Manor. Get it? And instead of handing it over to his father's kidnapper, the fairy cop he rescued earlier uses it to rescue him. Now, if you are not familiar with Artemis Fowl at all, after I just gave you that plot description, you are probably thinking, hold up, I have several questions. Well, let me tell you, so do I. I've never actually read any of the Artemis Fowl books. I've heard the name, but by the time they came out, I wasn't really in the target audience. So I went into this movie with no expectations. Somehow, it still failed to meet my expectations. So you might well ask, what did you expect, Sean? Coherence? You'd think that'd be an easy bar to clear, but no. I certainly was not expecting this from Kenneth Branagh. I know he can be hit and miss, but I don't think he's ever missed quite this hard. But I don't know if he deserves most of the blame, because I don't think anyone could have produced a decent movie out of this screenplay. And considering how long they've had to work on this, because this movie has pretty much been in development hell since the book came out, they really have no excuse. And one thing that seemed off to me right away, even though I've never read any of the books, was the characterization of young Artemis Fowl. When we first meet young Master Fowl, it becomes very clear that he is an arrogant jackass. And, oh my god, I've just met this kid and already I want to smack the shit out of him. And yet the movie clearly wants us to think that he is the hero of this story. And I'm sitting there thinking, why exactly am I supposed to like this guy? Well, it turns out I'm not, because in the book, he was actually the villain. Once I found that out, it made so much more sense. Oh, we're not supposed to like him. But then why do they try to make him the hero? The actual hero is Holly Short, played by Laura McDonald, who is the cop that Artemis kidnaps and apparently she was originally a person of color in the book. Hollywood whitewashing! How is this still a thing? And even without them completely botching Artemis' character, the whole thing is just a mess. Some of the characters are just wasted, like Artemis' best friend Juliet, or because he's such an arrogant jackass, I guess it's his only friend, and the villain Opal Kavoy. Opal isn't really so much a character as a cardboard cutout of a movie villain. And Juliet, I don't even know why she was there. I think the only thing she actually does in the movie is make Holly a sandwich. And it was a really weird sandwich. I know that's an odd thing to complain about, but seriously, is it just me? Or was that sandwich just really weird looking? I don't know what was up with it. I found the story to be pretty hard to follow and not structured very well. Some moments in the movie are just preposterous, like Artemis and Dom fighting off this entire fairy police force with one gun between the two of them. And there are some moments that just make you go... What? Josh Gad plays a character named Mulch Diggums, who is a dwarf, but he's like an oversized dwarf, so he's the same size as a regular human. So I guess he's like that dwarf in Dungeons and & Dragons. And apparently he is an excellent digger, and he digs by unhinging his jaw, and then swallowing up tons of dirt and instantly shitting it out. I'm not making this up. There's also a character that Opal springs from prison and is somehow able to instantly turn into a police lieutenant. I didn't really understand how that worked. And Artemis' big line at the end of the movie is, I am Artemis Fell, criminal mastermind. And as soon as he said that, I thought, are you? Because I don't feel like we ever actually established that. And overall, this movie just feels really long, even though it's only about 90 minutes. I will give the movie this much. Visually, it looks great. 
All of the various fantasy and sci-fi elements and the action sequences look fantastic, and there was clearly a lot of ambition that went into this project. It's just a shame the story didn't do it justice. In that regard, it kind of reminds me of Jupiter Ascending, except Jupiter Ascending was at least entertaining. Not entertaining for the reasons the Wachowskis intended, but it was still fun to watch, mostly because of Eddie Redmayne. It kind of seemed to me like Judi Dench was trying to be the Redmayne of this movie with whatever the hell that accent was that she was attempting, but she only went halfway. And if you are going to Redmayne your performance, you gotta go all the way. Otherwise, it doesn't work. You can't do half a Redmayne. Half a Redmayne is scarcely a Redmayne at all. Overall, it was confusing, it was boring, it dragged ass, and the visuals were the only redeeming quality. And I'm glad I didn't have to pay money to see it, because Disney just dumped it on Disney+. Plus. And that might have saved them from some additional bad press, because I cannot imagine this movie would not have bombed at the box office based on not just critical reviews, but comments that I've seen from people who are familiar with the books and were horribly disappointed with this. I've seen people compare it to Aragon in terms of adaptations, which... Whoo! Oh, that's harsh. Probably warranted, but harsh. But hey, you can't bomb at the box office if you were never at the box office to begin with. If you're a fan of the book, I see no reason for you to watch this because you're probably going to hate it. If you are not a fan of the book, I also see no reason for you to watch this because you're probably going to hate it. In the end, Artemis Fowl was indeed foul. And that's all I have to say about this waste of 90 minutes. So until next time, take care.